Before we get started, I have an announcement. We've been trying to rebrand our show and give it a new name. We put a poll up on Twitter for our top four names, and the voting has ended today. We are now the Dirty 20. As always, I am your Dungeon Master, Ethan Powell, with our regular role players, Joe and Jesse Parks. And for the farmers and the homesteaders out there, you might recognize our special guest for tonight, Cassie from Cassie at the Land. Ooh. And last time, Joe and Dixon went to the monastery and met with Yellow. They were then led to, a, to the ruins and then climbed down a well. There were a lot of bees. And they retrieved the saffron gem from a giant wolf spider that was engorged on honey. Uh, they then left uh, Slurmy with Mr. Honeycut because they were worried that something bad was going to happen to Mr. Honeycut, and they felt that Slurmy was the best protection they could get for Mr. Honeycut, which is outrageous because oh. it's Slurmy. Yes, darn Slurmy. <laughs> All right. Okay. What? Uh, okay. Well, what Slurmy? Slurmy is a goblinoid-like creature that they found in the sewers on the first episode of this story arc. And he is just, he is a nasty creature, constantly covered in mud and poop, and is just just the worst creature they could possibly that have. Is, that is the best description that's ever been said about Slurmy. <laughs> but they have fallen in love with this character. He was not supposed to last more than an episode, but now he is a permanent member of the party. <laughs> All right. It's midnight. Y'all have just reached your room in the inn when you notice a knocking on your window. What you, the hell was that? You're bigger than me. You check it. <laughs> All right. I'll go to look out the window. You see a large purple butterfly. Do I, do I open the window or what is it? Is it doing anything? <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's you see, it's vis it's physically knocking on the window. All right, I open the window. Joe Dixon, you need to get to Prism University right now. It is Who a the matter hell of are you? Oh, what I, a boy's butterfly. I am a spectral butterfly. Why does the butterfly have such like an intimidating voice? <laughs> because I'm a spectral butterfly. Oh, well, oh, I'm getting dressed and hurrying then. Yeah, let's You're get out You're still dressed. Y'all just left Mr. Honeycuts. Oh, what the hell? It's the same day. It has been night. And now we got to get to the university? Yes, the Prism University. All right, let's go to the Prism University. Good, follow me. And he flies out the window. He's not going to carry us? No, I'm. he's butterfly-sized. He's spectral butterfly, though. <laughs> yeah, but he's butterfly-sized. <laughs> <laughs> oh well we gotta uh, take the elevator because uh i'm not jumping down three flights there are no elevators and there's only one flight of stairs all right we'll, maybe we'll take the stairs then i don't want to know what's on these stairs as we get down joe you just had to talk about an elevator <laughs> yeah we'll go there's, down the stairs. there's nothing down the stairs <laughs> oh thank goodness the butterfly leads you to prism university to a purple nerd holding a uh, small stone and the butterfly lands on the staff of the purple uh, nerd and then evaporates. Great. And that is where you meet a purple nerd. Who are you? I'm oh, purple nerd. <laughs> <laughs> I'm purple nerd. <laughs> that ain't her name. It is. It Pur is. Purple nerd. Oh, purple. Do you have any uh, nicknames? It's around purple, it? sorry. It's just purple. Oh, purple. Oh, just purple. I'm just purple. Okay. I'm just purple. I'm here to help you. Mr. Honeycutt said I'm supposed to take this runestone and help y'all find the violet gem. All right. So you're going to lead us to the spot where the next gem should be. Apparently. Oh. I got this gem, <laughs> or I got oh. this stone. <laughs> so here's what I find out: this thing lights up when you activate it, and it has a series series of numbers on it: twelve, twenty six, nine, twenty four, thirty six. It came with, and it and it has a poem on it. 
A poem. That says a poem. Yes. Ooh. You need a red, red or a red in Shakespeare, please. <laughs> a what? We need, we need a red, a red in Shakespeare. We need well, a red in of, Shakespeare. Okay, it kind of is. <laughs> now, so if you can understand it, you can decipher it. <laughs> it is. It says, "Attune the stone to light the way." At Harold's crypt, one kneels to pray. Turn my skull, then bow your head, lest you who seek now join the dead. Once in the tomb, my name speak thrice. A gift of sunlight is the price. Oh, okay. So when we get down there, we're going to have to turn some skulls and duck because if not, it's going to kill us. And then we have to say the name three times and shine a light or something. I thought we'll get the sunlight if we say uh, Well, yeah, I don't, I could, I thought at first when I read it, I thought the sunlight is what we got, but it sounds kind of like that's the, what you have to give. Yeah, you got to ha- say the name three times and then. And then the, the gym will light up? Maybe. I think the gym yeah. light up lit up before yeah she can just she can just activate the the runestone yeah yeah i activate it and it lights up yeah i'm not what knows what's happening in that tomb maybe that's our light yeah but you know you know where the crypt is purple i do yes and you can lead them to it all right oh okay well good lead us down let's go we're going to the tomb all right, y'all descend down a staircase, and y'all meet a iron door. On the iron door is another riddle. Dust a hand cannot clean, a button a hand cannot push, a cog a hand cannot freeze. And on this metal door is a perfectly square patch of dust. What the hell is this? The riddle episode? Yes. It is. No, <laughs> oh, God. Well, you're going to have to read that again. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I missed it. I was yawning. <laughs> dust. <laughs> dust a hand. <laughs> I was yawning. I didn't, I didn't hear you. <laughs> dust a hand cannot clean. Okay, so we got a square that's got dust all over it, and a hand can't clean it. Okay. So we, okay. can't, we cannot touch it. Yeah, I would say not with my hand anyway. Okay. Okay, what's the next sentence? It is a button a hand cannot push. All right, okay. so we can't push the button. And then the last one is a cog a hand cannot freeze. And the only thing on the door is this square of is a dust? Perf- a perfectly square patch of dust. All right, so let's blow it off. What did you just do, Jeff? Uh, do a some bitch. Do a <laughs> do Joe. Do an Arcana check for me. I don't even know what my Arcana is. Yeah, it's zero. <laughs> All right, and that's a D twenty, right? Yeah, seventeen. All right, okay. You have deduced that you can't just blow this dust off. It's going to need oh, some you. form of magic. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's a, don't don't isn't there a magic thing that but all of it was using a hand. Uh prestidigitation did not. Oh, what what Remember, did, I can't even say that word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the one that could do like uh you could blow out a candle or make oh, a flower yeah. bloom little effects yeah. like that well let's see if that will do something if we whatever that word is yeah <laughs> all right is that what you're gonna do yeah all right yeah Can you I? you blow the dust off and underneath that dust is a button oh don't push that button. Oh. it says the hand can't push a button oh what well, if i grab just... a stick and poke it but i have a feeling it's magic i'm not gonna do that so we need another magic thing. Does it say anything on the button? Uh, no, the button has nothing written on it. 
Do you have any other kind of side of magic, Mom, that will uh, oh. manipulate? Just that hand thing. But it says a hand can't do it. Does a magic hand count? Could try it and see. Well, let's try it and see. Let's do that. So you summon a kind of ghostly hand and it pushes the button. The button goes in and a cog comes out and just starts spinning. Okay, you got a freeze spell? <laughs> I got a ray of frost. Ooh, that might all right. Can we it. cast that? Let's well, we got to stop the cog somehow. Wait, did we, can, we, can we just stop it with our hands since we can't No, freeze? it said a hand cannot freeze. A hand cannot freeze? Right. Yeah, the last part of the riddle is a cog, a hand cannot freeze. Oh, so if we maybe if we shoot it with the freeze ray. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so shoot that. it with freeze rays. Ray of frost. There All we right. go. All right, you blast ice at My it. Ray. And it stops moving. And then the crypt door opens. Ooh, there we Yay. go. All right, inside the crypt, there are seven alcoves with sarcophagi in them. Three to your left, three to your right, and one Come in here. front of you. All right, I'm going to look in the one straight ahead. You go over to that one. Uh, let's see. This tomb has a base relief of a wizard with his hand on a globe. The words, he opened the doors to the cosmos are inscribed on the tomb. Okay. And he has what with him? He has a globe in his hand. A globe, huh? Oh, we're looking for one I bet with a skull in his hand. Oh, okay. Maybe. You think? Yeah. Because it let's... said that that riddle said, turn my skull. Yeah, so let's look at uh, look in the other three coffins. No, right. there's six more. Three on yeah. the left and the right. Yeah. Let him right. down. Left. Left. All right. Which uh which one do you want to go to first? Very left of the left. Very left of the left. All right. This tomb has a best relief of a wizard holding a human skull in his hand and the word he investigated far into the shadow realms. Inscribed on his tomb. And he's uh, holding he what? A human a skull. skull. That's it, Joe. That's it. All right, let's turn the skull then, I guess. Joe, you turn it. I'm ducking. All right, I'll turn it. I'll turn the skull. <laughs> Be right. sure you bow your head when you do it. Yeah, I turn the skull and I drop to the floor. <laughs> All right. So, As you drop to the floor, lightning shoots from the statue to the wall across the way, and another secret door opens. Oof, there we go. That secret door. So you'll go into this room. In the middle of the room rests a stone sarcophagus atop a marble uh, base. The sarcophagus is carved with arcane symbols and an inscription uh, Zimmerus Prism, founder of Prism Academy. On the, on the lid is carved of a sleeping wizard clasping, clasped in the wizard's stone hand is a brilliant violet gem the same size as the amber runestone. So what was the name? Um, Zimmerman. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, Zimmerman Prism. Oh, okay. Zimmerman Prism. That was his name. So we say that three times. We'll say it three times, then. Oh, Zimmerman Prism. Zimmerman Prism. Zimmerman Prism. The uh, sarcophagus hand lets go of the purple root of the purple gem. I try and dive and catch it so it doesn't break. Okay. Yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> the the stone hand starts clutching its fingers and reaching well, I around. I think they stick that stone in it. The other stone, that that uh room, amber room stone. Stick All right, put that place. stone in it. Put that in there. It's in it there. grabs it grabs it and then it shines brilliantly. Oh, the sunlight. Yeah. And now you have the yeah. violet gem. Oh, there we go. Now we got the gym. Do we need to try to run out as quick as possible? It seems I don't fine. know if it was Indiana Jones. <laughs> possible. It almost was. We now we take the gym back to Honeycut. Yeah. Or Honeycomb, whatever his name is. No, it is Honeycut. <laughs> he oh, looked okay. at it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you go back to Mr. Honeycut's apartment. 
Uh, yes. Purple, do you join them or do you go back to your dorm room? Mm-hmm. It's up to you. I guess I, I go with them, I guess. All right. All right. So y'all head up to Mr. Honeycutt's apartment. Uh, oh, she meets Slurmy. Yeah. She, all right. So y'all knock on the door. Mr. Honeycutt opens the door and he looks completely disheveled. His apartment is a mess. And you just see Slurmy running in the background just <laughs> with like um, like a bowl on his head. Just Oh, running. you know for a fact all the shit got stolen now. <laughs> Mr. Honeycutt has like bags under his eyes. It's like 5 a.m. now. He obviously hasn't gotten any sleep. <laughs> Slurmy is just running around like a disheveled toddler. You're back so soon. <laughs> yep. I see. We got the gemstone. He takes the gemstone. Ah, yes, very, very good. And he, we are now ready. Uh, uh, Purple for aiding uh, these two. Take this as a reward, and he hands you a rust bag of tricks. It's just a A little. It's called a rust bag of tricks. It's a little magic item he's giving you. Awesome. Cool. Thanks. All right. Now, gentlemen, follow me. And that is where we'll end our session. Oh. What? Kind of... <laughs> Getting crazy now. Yep. Leave us on a Moon Knight episode, I see. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <for real. laughs> All right. Our next episode is going to be the last episode in the Nerds Candy Arc. So get psyched for that. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Be sure to check out my Patreon at patreon.com, Ethan and Powell Media, for exclusive art, behind-the-scenes videos, and content. Be sure to check out Cassie at the Land for farming, gardening, and homesteading tips and tricks. We are, we are also now selling merch on tpublic.com. Mm-hmm. You can check out all the links in the description below. Until next time. <laughs>